I've spent over 800 hours in the game. I've played in a $40,000 tournament about the game. I've set a world record in a category only I've played in, and I'm still bad. I, I'm, uh, I mean, I'm a professional Stardew Valley player, and here are all the Stardew Valley farms ranked. Okay, so standard farm, it's, it's, it's your bread and butter of Stardew Valley. It's what I personally started the game on, and what I'm sure a bunch of other people started the game on, because, you know, it's the default selected one. It's, it's pretty simple. You start in the house with a fireplace, you got a nice photo, a window, a TV, a plant, Plant, your parsnips, of course, and I, th I think it's a pretty solid starting place. You get pretty much everything you need. You got the fireplace. Fireplace looks very nice. For some reason, this has no no obstacles. Not sure what happened here. I think that's that's kind of one of the biggest. What happened to this save? Anyways, sorry guys, we can't what the hell? What I like about this um, is that there's a lot of space to farm because I personally really like farming. I like to get down a lot of sprinklers, plant a ton of crops. That's just always kind of the way I've, I've played. I don't know why. It's just kind of the way I enjoy the game, except I hate watering, funnily enough. So I always speed run the mines for sprinklers. And I like this farm because you can do that strategy where like you rush and get a ton of different crops down and make a ton of money, have a ton of sheds down, etc. But you still have enough room to like actually decorate it and look nice. Obviously, I'm not going to decorate it and make it look nice because I'm terrible at decorating, but you could if you wanted to. I made a few attempts at decorating. You know, I made a giant Junimo, but it didn't didn't turn out so well. Yeah, I'm honestly just forgetting how big this farm actually is. Because it is massive. You can get so many crops in here. I'm probably gonna put like funny meme of, you can fit, you know, the guy with the car and he puts his hand on it and says, you can fit so many crops. I'm gonna do that so you guys know. Yeah, so this is kind of a basic selection, but I think it's one of the better ones for gameplay and aesthetics, just because, you know, it's it's simple. It, it knows what's in, what it wants to do, which is get a lot of crops down, have a lot of space, and it does it. You know, not really any gimmicks like a lot of the other ones. I'm not saying gimmicks are bad. I, I do like a gimmick here and there, but I do sometimes just like a, a good old fashioned game of Stardew, Stardew Valley, you know, it's a simple, simple farm. And that's kind of what you're getting here, except for some reason made an L that's glitched into the wall. Huh, interesting. Anyways, on to the next farm. Or sorry, no, I actually have to place it on the tier list first. So I'm actually going to go ahead straight off the bat and place this in great tier because I'm a bit biased, but I love this farm. Oh, th that's what it's meant to be. This is supposed to be in my extremely biased tier list my bad all right and after standard farm we have riverland farm oh boy so if you guys have watched my streams or any of my videos you know i'm not a huge fan of this i do got to admit this beginning cabin you know gives you a good impression got the classic fireplace that i'm a big fan of you got a map too got, got, got a little bit of stardew lore going there's like the grotto empire and ferngill republic or maybe other way i can't remember there's the ferngill republic and grotto empire in there somewhere we also got this nice anchor i'm a really big fan of that these windows are kind of bright i don't hate them though they look pretty nice honestly and i i really prefer the ship over the one in the standard surprisingly enough i don't like the floor tv though i really i'm not not a fan of the floor TV. Two carpets, you know, you're getting a lot of bang for your buck. So I, I don't have any issue with the cabin itself. Um, I think it looks pretty nice. Then we get to the actual outside. And this is where I begin to have issues with it. And I'll tell you why. Because, so, you know, the main point of this farm is that you can fish, right? Like, you have a lot of water, so you can fish. You don't get any new fish on the farm. Like, if I just pull up the wiki quickly. The Riverland farm. Okay, so this is what you can catch. You can catch. 70% of the time, the player will catch a town river fish. Fish that are found in Pelican Town. And 30% of the time, Players will catch pond fish, fish that are found in cinder sap forest. So you can already catch these fish insanely easily. It's not like you're getting exclusive, limited time fish. You're getting fish you would normally catch in like pretty basic areas, except you only have 1500 tiles, which is not a lot compared to the standard. You got 3,400. So it's, it's not, it's really not good at all. And then if we just head back to it, so 1500 tiles sounds like a lot, but the thing is it's placed in such a haphazard manner because you know, if it was just 15, if it was a fit, like a nice, nice, even like a 10 by 15 rectangle of those, then it'd be pretty good. You know, that's a decent amount of space, but you can see it split off into these little islands, which it's not a great, it's not great for like, if you're going for purely efficiency, you know, I admit it's, it's pretty good for decorating. Actually, you can make some really nice looking farms. That's not really where my issue lies with this farm. It's just kind of for normal gameplay, it gets really annoying really quickly because you just find that you don't have enough space to plant everything you want. The barn, you get your barn and your coop down and you know, all that stuff down. And then you're you're basically like a lot of space gone. And if you really want to go big in into the animals, you can. Let's say you've been playing this farm for a while and you get to the end game and you want to start trying some interesting money-making methods. Like, I don't know, planting a ton of ancient fruit. You literally just do not have the space to do that because there's just not very many tiles. Or you're gonna have to do some really weird scuffed setup that's just really inefficient. Heading back to the tier list, I'm, I'm not a 
a big fan of this farm. I'm gonna put it in the bad tier, but not awful. I think I think it serves its purpose, which is decorating. And you know, if you like decorating and you love this farm, <coughs> and the next farm we're gonna be doing is the forest farm. Okay, the forest farm is a pretty popular farm, and I completely understand why. Straight off the bat, we can get a general vibe of this farm. Three trees, one or sorry, four, four trees. One, two, three, four. So that already kind of gives you the general vibe. You know, it's gonna be it's gonna be a lot of a lot of trees and like grass kind of greenery. I'm not a fan of this carpet. It's kind of ugly. I I the wallpaper's decent. The floor is amazing. Um I pretty much like not a fan of the floor TV again, but we do get the camp or the the fireplace, which I'm a fan of. Definitely a big fan. And then we move outside. So you might be saying, well Wally guy, there's not a ton of space on the forest farm either. You're only working with 1,413 tiles, which is actually less than the Riverland farm. And that was one of your main complaints on the Riverland farm, that you just didn't have enough space. Well, here's the thing. Whereas on the Riverland farm, all that space was spread out against various islands. With this, you have this big open space. Like right here, you can get a ton of crops or barns or whatever you want here. So that, that kind of, my main issue wasn't that the Riverland farm didn't have tiles. It, it has an okay amount of tiles. It's that the tiles were in inconvenient places that kind of prevent large amounts of crops but with this you can get a ton of crops down so I don't, I don't really have an issue with this with this particularly I, I think it's actually a really good farm because first off the bat I've even gotten to the benefits and we're still like pretty far into this right here you see this hardwood where you're basically getting like a second secret wood I think you actually get more hardwood here than you do with the secret woods you're getting yourself a solid what is that that's 16 hardwood a day plus the secret woods that's like that's like 30 hardwood a day so much hardwood so much wrong XP it's amazing and you see all these green tiles it's boom forgeable right there forgeables can spawn on this so you're gonna get a ton of space for forgeables. They're not super useful. I don't think forgeables are all that. Where the hell is the path? I don't think forgeables are super useful. I'd rather have farmable with tiles, but I think it is worth it because you can get all this hardwood. And you know, if you need to craft heavy tappers late game or anything that does require hardwood, it's really nice because you do have that extra hardwood intake. 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 What am I saying? Intake? What I was trying to say. So I think that's why this is one of the better farms. I'm actually a pretty big fan of this farm. Played my 100 days at Stardew Valley on this farm. And I think if I was to start a new farm, probably wouldn't choose this farm. But that's just me purely because I've already played it. And I want to try a different farm if I do start a new save at some point. So I think this is an excellent farm. You can also, funnily enough, it's better for fishing than the fishing farm. Because <laughs> in this big pond, you can actually, you can actually catch wood skip. And yeah, no, I mean, wood skip's pretty good. It's good for like fishing speed runs. You know, that Brandigan by the way clip where he fails to catch the wood skip. Or no, he catches the wood skip and then he throws it away. That's going to be on screen now. Oh, I got a fish. Wood skip. Okay, let's, go. let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Okay. I'm just okay. Our plan. Stuff. Okay. I'm going to run up Easy. and put this in the chest. <laughs> Let's go. Do you have oh! So, what? Oh no! What you do? I deleted it. <laughs> I was wondering why my chat was like no. And here's the list of all the forgeables that can spawn. In spring, we can get dandelion, leek, moreel, and wild horseradish. In summer, we can get common mushroom, grapes, spice berry, and sweet pea. Fall, we can get chanterelle, common mushroom, purple mushroom, and red mushroom. Really good. You know, those are some decent forgeables, especially for the community center with like the moreel. Or if you're like trying to get a full shipment, you, you can get pretty lucky with it because it gives you a lot more chances without having to check the entire map. So overall, I think this is an excellent map. We're gonna chuck it into the. We're gonna chuck this farm into another great after forest we have the hilltop farm the hilltop farm is a little bit of a controversial one i think i talked bad about it briefly in my what your starter valley farm says about you and i kind of regret that because straight off the bat this is a beautiful room you got the pickaxes like we, we in minecraft we mine in some we mine in some blocks um we got a, a, a stone fireplace which looks amazing with the back wall got a nice interesting window haven't seen that type before i've been talking for 10 minutes straight so i want some water <sighs> ltdstore.com oh wait wrong channel my bad we got like a nice table you know we got a crystal gotta be valuable you know good stuff and then some sort of lantern i think that looks pretty cool and um then we head outside to the actual farm itself after we grab the seeds of course we can see this is another kind of riverland farm issue i guess i'm just gonna call that which is it has a decent amount of space 1600 tiles which is a good amount of tiles that's more than the forest farm and i think slightly more than or no about the same as the riverland town but once again it's kind of an inconvenient location it's not exactly as inconvenient as the riverland farm it's pretty decent honestly i don't mind it at all but it is kind of 
a little bit inconvenient. But other than that, I think this is a really nice looking farm. I think it looks better than the Riverland farm. Like I saw a time lapse of some guy doing a hilltop, like a hilltop farm over a couple years. That's super cool. So yeah, I think it's a really good decorating farm and it's a solid playthrough farm. However, there is one pet peeve on this farm for me that just drives me up a wall. And I'm gonna head over to it now. If you played the farm, you probably know exactly what I'm talking about. If not, prepare for this to haunt your nightmares. So if you're trying to head here, if you don't have a copper ax, there's a stupid stump blocking your way. It's so, it frustrates me so bad. So you have to go all the way around if you want to head over to like your quarry. And speaking of the quarry, we haven't even touched on the quarry yet. So the main benefit of the hilltop farm is the fact that you can go ahead and you get a quarry. Quarry is basically, you know, some rocks spawn there, like the quarry you unlock at the community center. It's a little bit smaller. Essentially, the rewards get better the higher farming level you get. So farming level, or sorry, mining level, the higher mining level you get, the higher mining level you are, the different rocks still spawn. So at mining level one, it's going to spawn some copper, some rocks, some geodes. And at higher tier farming, it's going to spawn in some better quality minerals like iron, gold. I don't know if it can spawn iridium. I'm actually not even sure about gold, but it can definitely do iron and copper minimum. So it's pretty useful. It's decent. It's a decent source of mining XP. And for whatever reason, a lot of worm spots like to spawn up here. There's three just straight off the bat. That's kind of convenient. You're hunting for some artifacts or just need yourself some clay. Um, Yeah, totally. We need more stone. No stone here. But yeah, so I think it's a good all around farm. The quarry isn't overly useful, but it's pretty decent. And I think it, it looks pretty nice. I don't think it's that good. So we're going to chuck it into, no, I do think it's good, but not great. So we're going to chuck it into the good tier for now. After the hilltop, we're going to have the wilderness farm. Though I initially kind of just thought of the wilderness farm as like the wilderness farm. Holy smokes, this is so cool straight off the bat. I don't think I've ever had a wilderness farm. You have like a boarded up window, a normal window. You got a cactus, a lantern, and some extra storage straight off the bat. You can chuck, never mind, you don't have any extra storage off the bat. You got yourself a lamp, a cool carpet. We got Krobus on there. We got a bat, a skull, stupid flying skulls. We got a slime and another alien reference. Then we've got a slime, a Krobus, a bat, a nice little hanging shield. Oh yeah, super nice looking thing. I like the stone, I like the stone fireplace, the nice wall, super cool looking place. And then we head out into the farm and you're like, oh, okay, this is just like a standard farm. Wrong. There is a huge field of water. So basically, normally there's like a little field of water on the standard farm, which, you know, it's, it doesn't really get in the way. This one kind of does. It is in the middle a little bit, but I think as you can see, there's still a ton of space all over the place to get down all your crops, your animal enclosures, etc. And also the bottom just looks really cool. I don't, I, I don't know why, but I really like this kind of forest, forest kind of vibe. And then over here, we have another big lake. And then up here, this is where it changes. This is, this is the big change. I think that differentiates, different, holy smokes, I cannot speak, differentiate, that makes it different is what I was trying to say. <laughs> oh my God. Um, that's what happens when you talk for 16 minutes straight. Um, like it, it cuts off a huge amount of the farm. So it's not just a standard farm, but with a big lake. Oh yeah. And there's one more thing I didn't mention this farm. You, well, you can now turn it on, on any farm where you can make monsters spawn. But on this farm, it's main selling point is that it had monsters spawning by default. So when it gets late at night, monsters will spawn and uh, harass you a little bit. I think it's a decent, decently interesting mechanic. I don't think it's like a game changer. It's like mildly useful, I guess. You can get some decent decent mob drops and level up your combat like here and there if you do end up killing a few guys. But I don't think it's overly, I don't really think it's a game changer. Like I don't think, oh, you should go for this farm because of this feature. Just kind of like, eh, it's a feature that's there. If you use it, you use it. If it annoys the heck out of you, it annoys the heck out of you. So I think once again for the tier list, we're going to be chucking this one on to the good because it's not, or, I'm going to chuck it on to the neutral on second thought purely because of the annoying. It's kind of all on its own, but like that, that big water in the middle and the chunk out of the top left does annoy me a little bit. So it's only going to be a neutral for me. And then our second to last one is the Four Corners Farm. Four Corners Farm holds a little bit of a special play to my heart, purely because it was the first farm I started playing. It's a, it's a really nice farm, and I'm going to explain to you why. So straight off that, oh, I almost left the cabin before describing it. And a nice lamp. I don't think this is the best looking one. I think this might actually be the worst looking one, purely because of the wall and that flower. I'm not a big fan of those flowers. I do think this is a decent looking lamp, and I like that we have a standing up TV. I'm a big fan of the standing up TV. But then we head outside, and this, this is why I love the farm. So basically the reason I love the farm is as you can see, it cuts off and you're like, wow, that's not a lot of farming space. However, you actually get yourself a little bit of everything on this farm. So you have a lot of space and it's all evenly divided into four little quadrants, which allows you to like put your crops in one corner. You can neatly divide everything. And also each thing is like kind of, kind of one of the farms down here. This is like, this is the mining farm. This is, we got a mini quarry down here, which once again, not super useful, but kind of useful and pretty cool that we just have one lying around in case we need like one 
one more coffer and don't want to run all the way to the mines. Um, however, there's also some interesting shortcuts, as you can see. When we, when you get a copper axe, you can actually run through here, so that's really nice. And also, greenhouse is in a super convenient place. Overall, this is just a super cool farm because you can neatly divide everything. Down here in the bottom left corner, there's also a really big lake, I think, which is also cool. I don't think you can really get any useful fish out of it, so it's not, it's kind of like another riverland situation, but I guess it's just like nice to have if you just want to do some late night fishing just to chill. But yeah, not, not incredibly useful, but still a decent selling point. You can also, you, you might think, hey, it's kind of annoying that I have to walk all the way to the middle. And you don't actually have to do that. You do have to get yourself eventually, when you get yourself an iron axe and an iron pickaxe, you can break your way through so you can go between them really quickly. I do admit straight off the bat, it is really annoying that you can't get through. But when you do get the axe, it's a beautiful farm. You can turn it into an amazing layout that I think turns out amazing. However, <laughs> I have seen people get screwed because a meteorite like lands right here. I mean, and they can't leave the bottom of the farm until they upgrade their axe and head out there. So, I mean, that's probably not going to happen to you, but if it does, that is hilarious. Please leave a comment about it. So I think that is going to leave this farm into the good tier. Then the final farm, the beach farm. So the beach farm was the newest farm added. It was added in update 1.5. I'm not really a big fan of this room. I don't like the palm trees. Not really a big beach guy. I think this is a cool looking shelf. Not a fan of the walls though. It's okay. Nothing crazy is what I'm trying to say. Then we head outside and you see sand. So my main issue with this farm actually is sand. And the reason that is, is because you cannot place sprinklers on sand as I will demonstrate. So we whip out a iridium sprinkler from our cheat menu and you can see sprinklers won't work on this terrain. And that's because like they get clogged by sand or whatever. I like this in theory. I think it's an interesting mechanic, but it's just not for me. I'm a really big sprinkler guy. You do get a little bit of sprinklerable, sprinklerable space down here, which is good. I kind of, so I like the idea of this farm, but I really hate playing on it. If you like playing on it, hey, fair enough. You know, you can do some interesting designs. I've seen a couple videos where people turn this into greenhouses from like mossy. So you can in theory fill this place with sheds and then make a bunch of greenhouses. But overall, I'm not a huge fan of it. I do kind of like this forageable area down here, similar to the forest farm. So it is a pretty big farm and you can get away with a lot of stuff on it. And also another huge benefit of it is pretty good. But I think again, it's still overshadowed by the fact that you just can't use sprinklers on the majority of the farm. Then you have to hand water or just not plant a lot of crops, which is, I just can't, you know, I have to. Um, but anyways, back to what I was saying, there's a lot of crates that can spawn here that can drop some decent stuff. It can give you some survival burgers. In my opinion, that's the best drop. It gives you like 100, 200 energy, I believe, which is really good early game if you're mining because that that's like, that's like 10-ish, five or 10 floors if you're lucky on a single day. So I think it's an okay farm, nothing amazing, but I think if you did end up picking it, you're not completely screwed. You're just going to be mildly inconvenienced if you did not realize that you couldn't play sprinklers. And I have heard stories of people not realizing that they couldn't play sprinklers until they got to the end game and they were quite annoyed about that. I mean, I guess you could download a mod, but I think that kind of defeats the entire purpose of this of this farm, which is to just have a lot of space. So we head back to our tier list and we chuck this into the bad tier. I'm just really not a big fan of it. I, th I think in the end, it just, it just comes down to the fact that you cannot play sprinklers. Make sure you subscribe also if you have ever used one of these farms. Also, come watch this video on some dumb mistakes I made while playing Starter Valley. Make sure to bullet me in the comments.